So it came to a point where I just said, you know what? These people, they don't love me. I'm their son with blood, but automatically they don't love me because even the time I used to push wheelbarrows in town, they'll meet me in town, see me in the robot there, even just to say, hello, how are you? They'll not do that. They'll just keep quiet and look at me. I greet everyone in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Warren Dave Chilwane. I was born in Akonok in a place called Blazavio. It's in Pumalanga province. Uh, I'm the first born son of Yvonne Chilwane and Prophet Marvin. I'm also the grandson of the late Lili Chilwane and Popim Zimba. I went to Wem Akonuk. In Wem Akonuk, this school is both primary and high school. So there was no need of me of moving to that school. It's where I did my, I finished my, le my level of uh, primary and then I did also my high school level. So when I was growing up as a young boy, I had problems where the time I was born, like the sight of my father's family, I was not like accepted. Like even when I was born, my mother didn't know which name to give me because my father was not there for her. Even the people of the family, they were not there to support her because she's saving their baby. So my mother decided that, okay, because in that family, she knows the brother of my father. So she decided to take the name of the brother of my father and give it to me. The name Dave is the name that comes from there, is the name of the brother of my father. So they gave me that name. So I grew up, I grew up, I grew up, I grew up. But when I was growing up, so I thought that those people they would come like and like support me, be there for me, but the family never came like be there for me. I started struggling, even my mother was struggling to raise me up. So when I was drawing my grade eight level, so when I decided, no, you know what? I'm just going to look for a job. So I did not drop out from school, but I looked for a job. So after school, I'll go to work. So early in the morning, I'll go to school. So there was this ZCC woman who was selling like food in the complex where I was staying in Akono Plaza. So the name of the woman is Mwam Kong. They stay around the place where it's called Greenville. Greenville is located next to Akono. So this woman I had me that each and every day when I come from school, I must come and fetch water for her. That early in the morning, every day they must be able to cook food. So after school, I'll go there and fetch water. It's how I was surviving. I'll take the money that the woman pays me and I'll buy uniform. I'll use it for lunch at school. So until I reach to my metric level. So when I was in my metric level, my principal will say, this boy is struggling. So, but the principal was there for me. Every time was advising me, don't give up. Uh, don't drop out from school. So the principal, his name is Mr. Masendegi. He comes from Zimbabwe. But he was there, he was our principal there in Mpomalanga province. So I, I, I did my metric there. The principal was there for me. Also advised me, work hard, boy. So I was working hard at school, studying, because I had this thing in my mind that if I don't pass my metric, I will not have future. That was the thing in my heart, that if I don't make it in my metric, I will not have future. So Mr. Masendego was there, like supporting me. I remember before, I went to my metric level. He appointed me to be a president at school. So like I was surprised, this man is appointing me as a, a president at school and then I don't have like proper uniform. I'm not like other children, like I'm still, even other children they can see. I'm not like them, I'm someone different. Even during break, sometimes I'm afraid to go outside and go eat lunch because I did not have money sometimes to eat. So I'll just relax inside the class, like I'm busy studying. So I finished my metric, so I left the grandmother Mom Kondo. I went to a FET called Zurel Bros. So I went there, I studied my mechanical engineering. So I started to study there my mechanical engineering when I was busy studying on my tertiary level. So because I left that job where I was working now, I'm in my tertiary level now. So now things are becoming worse again. So it's when I meet one old man called by the name of Manailana. This old man, he took me, he said, you know what, boy? Because you are doing mechanical engineering at school, and then me, I'm a mechanic in the street. Every time when you're not studying, or you're not going to class, or after class, if you stay half time, come and work with me. After work, I'll give you something. So after school, 
I used to go and work with the old man. I work with the old man. This old man originally, he comes from in a place in Limpopo, in a place called the Rachuin. It's where this old man comes from. So I worked with that old man. So when I was working with the old man there, uh, came a time when like I finished like my tertiary level. So I started looking for a job. I was not getting a job. So uh, I decided, you know what? Yeah, let me just go to church and pray. God will just try to open doors for me. It's when I joined a church called Dunamis House of Worship. So I went to Dunamis House of Worship. I was just going as a church goer. So sometimes in life when they say, when you associate with people, you must be careful. You may associate with people who are stealing, you may end up being a criminal even you. So as, when I joined the church, I associated myself with the people who were ushering in the church. Most of the people that they were, I was close to them, they were ushering in the church. So these people, they started influencing me that, you know what, if you want your life to be better, come and work with us. So there was this man by the name of Mkwatedi and Mr. Mbombi. They said to me, come and work with us. You'll see God will open your doors. I refused it the first time. Like I went to a church for almost one year. My things were not getting better. So I decided, you know what, let me just start by Packing the cars in the church, I help pack the chairs in the church, let him help when people they clean. So I just started like that. Those guys, they teach me, they teach me how to work, how to do things in the church, how to welcome people in the church. So it's when, one time goes on, when the prophet is busy praying for the people in our church. So they used to go with me, help us to usher, help us to usher. Even the prophet like was surprised because actually in the church what is happening, before someone can help, the person must be ordained. So myself, these people just influence me, just come and work with us. No, when the prophet asks us a question, why you come and help us, we'll explain. So the prophet, by the name of Prophet Mate, he treated me, he treated me in a good way. He never like had a problem when I was working. He became interested. He became interested. Sometimes even the people who told me the work, sometimes we get that they're not there. When Prophet Mate enters the church, he will call me, son, you know what, can you please take out the water inside my car, put it in the, in the table where there's a table where in our church, like most we sell water. So they put the water there. So I'll be the one like taking the water from the car of the prophet, putting it there. So sometimes like the prophet will come early in the morning, check how is the church so okay the church is okay i clean the church everything is okay i organize everything so the prophet came interested of what i was doing so i started working in the church i started working so when i was working there was a lady who was a manager i didn't know by the name of bonnie mckay so this lady he saw me when I was busy working in church, working, helping, helping. But she will meet me in the street like, I don't have better clothes. It's like, she will see this guy is suffering, but always in church he's helping. So this lady said to me, where are you working? I told the lady, I'm not working. I'm just like a person who's begging food from other people. So he said to me, you know what? I want to take you. I'm a manager in Celsi, so I want to give you a job. So he took me. I went to Celsi. I became a team leader. So I worked there. The time... The lady took me and I worked with her there. I was struggling because I was looking for money to do a driver's license. It's when I started to raise money to go and do a driver's license. I worked, I worked, I worked. The contract came a time where the contract could finish. So it's when I said, okay, my sister, thank you for your help. So it's when I just tried, okay, you know what? I tried to look for a job. I don't know what's happening now, now. Because that contract could finish. So the other person in the church, uh, there is a man who was working for Jaguar in Land Rover. So this person came by the name of Francis in our church, just came and said, you know what, I want to help you also, I want you to come and work with us. So I worked in Land Rover. I worked, I worked, I worked, I worked, I worked, until I decided, no, ish, let me just leave this place and just start my own business. Because there was this Nigerian guy just came to me, you know what, you go back to this thing of uh, of selling air times and SIM cards and some other things. Start your own company, register your own company, stand by your own self. So I registered my own company, so the person helped me to meet other people who can help me to start the, the company. When I was at school, uh, Mr. Masandege used to tell me that, actually you, you are not the person that you are going to survive from school. You are that person that you can survive with your talent, because actually, 
I was someone who was, rec I was recording demos. So during cel like celebrations at school, like when they have bash or anything at school, I used to perform. Many people that they went with me at school, they used to call me DJ Scrief because they know me by this name at school. They used to call me about this nickname. So I used to perform under the entertainment things. They know I used to do well there. So when I registered the command, just okay, let me do this thing of distribution. And then let me just register also a record label that if God can help me when time goes on, uh, I'll just become an artist and manage myself. So I did those things. So one time goes on, time goes on, time goes on, time goes on. Like that thing of me being rejected by people from my father's family, it was still there on me. So I remember that the year before my father passed away, Every time when I sleep, there was something that was talking to me. I didn't know where that thing coming from. He used to tell me, you know what, your father's going to die. Your father's going to die. So, because the time I was in school, I was close to the twins, two twins. This, it was in Kololeko and Pumelelo. So, I was close to them. Uh, this, these twins is like my father. When you look at the mother of the twins, he says sister. So, like, I called the guy. So, my, my bra, it's like, can I talk to your uncle? How can I find your uncle? So those guys, they never responded my call. I tried to call them, I tried to call them, they never responded my call. They just ignored me. So I kept quiet from there. So came the following year, it was around June, July. So my father passed away. When my father passed away, someone just called me from nowhere. You know what, my brother? Your father passed away. Okay, my father passed away. And then these guys, I have their number, they have my number, they did not call me, they did not say anything. No one from the family of my father just called me. So okay, I keep quiet. So I took a phone, I called the woman that I was working for, Mom Kondo. So I told her, Mama, I heard something like this. So is it true? The woman found information, yes, it's correct. Your father passed away. So I keep quiet. So it's okay, what can I do? So I went home in Bush Bagrish. So I tried to call before I entered the yard where the funeral was because the funeral was at uh, my father, my grandmother's place. Because my father originally was staying in Rustenbeck, he was saving a church there. The church is called this Divasata Pelo. So he was there, he was, full time was in Rustenbeck because he was the pastor there in Divasata Pelo. So they took a body there, they came with it in Bush Bagrish. So when we were there, when I went to the funeral there, so before I entered the gate, I called again. These guys, they never answered my calls. I just went to the tent, I just sit there. I went to my father's funeral like I'm someone from the community who came to support, not part of the family. So I sit back there, it was on a Friday in the evening. So I sit there. So after, after the service, I went out, like everyone was going home. So I asked a lift to, to one certain pastor, he gave me the lift. So when we were on our way, going to, cause that time when I arrived there, I went to sleep to a person that I was looking for. So, when I, I was on my way, going to the grandmother to go and get a place to sleep, so this pastor, they were saying, they said, you know what? The people of the family, they said tomorrow, they will not have a service in the yard. They booked a hall. There is a pastor around there, our place is called the Pastor's Linda. So they said, they asked, to the church of Pastor Slender that they're going to have a funeral, the, the service day of the funeral early in the morning. And then from Pastor Slender's church, they're going to grow to the graveyard of uh, Ramsey Roy. That graveyard, they call it Ramsey Roy. It's in the site of going to Oaks Spirit, that site. So I listen what they were saying. So I called one of my aunts and say, Mama, I have a problem. It's like I asked one of my friends to go with him in the funeral. And then this guy is telling me that tomorrow, you will not be able to go with me there. So I'm afraid to go alone there because these people, like, they ignore me. They don't want to see me there. I don't know when they see me. It's like they see a monkey or they see a baboon. I don't know. So I called one of my sister's mother by the name of Amelia. I said, Mom, I have a problem. So my auntie said to me, you know what? What time are they, these people are going to start? So I said, from the pastor what I had, these people, they said 6 o'clock, they'll start the service there. So... Six o'clock, I make sure that I was ready. I stand somewhere in the complex. We went there. They did everything there. Uh, in most cases, if you're a child, one of your parents passed away. You know there's a time, like even the, some of the family members, the, the pastor will just say, 
all the people of the family come one side and come and make the body viewing. Myself, I was not part of that. I was not like included that. I did not even see my father that was there in the coffin or not. I never saw anything from there. So I did not have that chance. They never called me, like they rejected me. I went to my father's funeral, like I'm attending someone's funeral from nowhere that I don't know. Like I'm just someone in the community supporting one family that I just know around. So when the people went out from the hall, because I know that these people during the week, I tried to call. They never answered my phone. I know these people, they don't want to see me at all, the way that they were rejecting me. So I was even afraid to go to the car where the family will use. So I went out from the gate of the wall. I just find people that those cars of the people in the community, that they just come and support. I just asked for a lift to one old man. I went there. When we reached in the graveyard, I did not even go in front of the day. Like, there is a time where they say people from the family come and throw soil in the grave before they can like close the grave there. So myself, I was not part of everything. I was not there in the tent. It's like I was, I was with other people like who came to support. Because you know when people they came to support, the family, they'll be there in front next to the grave. So the people who are not the part of the family, they'll just stand a distance away. So me, I was with other people who are not part of the family. I was just standing there. So I just heard the pastor even when he was preaching. So it's how they buried my father like that. So after the funeral, just went to the gate, I washed my hand, and it's how I went like that. Sometimes in life, any person that rejects you in life, they are blessing you. A rejection is a blessing. Uh, since I went to church, like starting to pray deep, I like, understand, you know what? Rejection is not there like uh, to destroy you. When people, they reject you, they are blessing you spiritual. If you can check, majority of the people, who were rejected, they are successful. Majority of people who were rejected, they have achieved a lot of things in life. So rejection is a blessing. Also the people who rejected you, they can even come again to you and say, you know what, help us with one, two, three, and they even forget that we are the one who are rejecting this person. So as a child, if let's take, I was given that support, like from my father's family and my mother's family both, like my mother's family was there for me, it's just they were not there too much for me. Just my mother was struggling a lot, but at least they tried something. But my father's family, like, it was off. Like, even now, if I can say, in my life since I was born, I never even received 50 cents from my father. Just received 50 cents. Just going by a suite. I never received that. So my mother struggled with me a lot, tried to do a lot of things that to make a plan to, ra to raise me up. So even myself, I helped myself because I was just a hustler. I made sure that every time, I must hustle, hustle, hustle. I must, do, I must not just wait for her to look for money, that we must go to school. Like I will hustle even myself to show that I want to be somewhere, somewhere in life. This thing just came to my head. You know what? If you, you don't accept or these people, they don't want you, you'll have a problem. So it came to a point where I just said, you know what? These people, they don't love me. I'm their son with blood, but automatically they don't love me because even the time I used to push wheelbarrows in town, They'll meet me in town, see me in the robot there, even just to say, hello, how are you? They'll not do that. They'll just keep quiet and look at me. So it's like, just okay, let them just accept the situation. So in most cases, you get most of the children. They smoke drugs around town. They smoke nyaope, a lot of things like that. This kind of things where a son will just grow without support from both parents is a problem sometimes. I've experienced this thing. This thing is a problem so sometimes we have those children that yes they smoke drugs because they are stable but majority family problems they can make you to lose the vision of your future you can plan and say you see in 10 years to come or 20 years to come i want to be a doctor you end up not reaching there because of family problems like there's no support for you there you want to go to school but there's no one who's supporting you there so it's how i grew up myself so when time goes on time goes on even myself i just say you know what let me just keep on praying. Just believe God is the one who's going to help me. One time goes on, I find myself like having my metric, having my certificate of mechanical engineering. So I have my own company. So like I can say, okay, without those people I made it in life. So sometimes we have children that they think without support from their parents or support from people from the family. If like that person, the parent passed away, you can't make it in life. You can make it. 
as long God is in your sight. Because what helped me is the people that, because myself, since from a young age, I was just going to church, going to church, going to church, going to church, going to church. Even before I joined the church, Dunamis House of Worship, there is a church that I joined, like it was more of a Zioni church. Like the pastor came from Mozambique by the name of Makwakwa. He was there in the community. Because the time I was suffering, some, something just came to me. You know what? If you can go to church, I just said that belief. If you can go to church, your things will be okay. When I'm sitting every time, the thing that most I think in my head is for me to join Dunamis House of Worship because like the prophet in most cases when he teach, like he's the one just gave me hope straight at the last moment that you know what, yeah, I can make it. Even himself, like is someone who like is supportive. Uh, my prophet Elvimat is somebody who's like a supportive, supportive. So this thing like gave me courage, you know what, don't move from the church. And after I finished my school, I never went back to the village because I saw it's like the church is supporting me, not financially, but both spiritual, like they are supporting me spiritual, actual, and physical, that I must be someone in life. So I just said, you know what, let me just sit in the church until Jesus will just do my things the way that I want. So I love to thank God because he protected me from that difficult times until today. When I look back in my life, I did not even think that one day I will have a metric certificate or I will have a, a mechanical engineering certificate or I will achieve something in my life because the way that things were, I thought that I'll not go anywhere like in life like other children. So I love to thank God for the protection that came upon my life. Also other children out there, they must just pray and believe that God is there on their side. Even when the people from your family, they reject you, that do, do not mean that you can't go anywhere from your life. Even when your parent, they left you in this earth when you're still young and you don't have any parent, that do not mean that you cannot be somewhere in life. If only you believe in God, Jesus Christ is the one who can help you. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Warren Steve Chilwane. I have been through the most. <laughs>